Hello, everyone. Today's devotional reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11 through verse 15, where it is written, Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John came, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Wait a minute. Verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. What does that mean? We're not really sure. Now, there have been various interpretations, but we really don't know. So, what does it mean? The two big camps are the violent take it by force. Oh, there's persecution of the church. We must endure the persecution of violence. Maybe. And there is a, uh, another interpretation. And this interpretation says, okay, there are people spiritually are violent. They're rough cut. They have no regard for God or for anything. But seemingly by the miracle, or it is a miracle, by the Holy Spirit, they wake up and go, what, a, what on earth am I doing wasting my time in this violent, petty, selfish, weird life? I'm fighting against it. I repent, and by God's grace, they fight against their sinfulness and change and amend their sinful lives. Maybe that's what this verse means. Again, we don't know, but those are the two big thoughts. And which one it is, I don't know. No one really does. But either way, it is a meaningful interpretation for us. If it's the first interpretation, where we struggle against persecution, well, pray that God will send the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, his church, so that we may enjoy our fellow saints in heaven, and ultimately in the resurrection. That pray that no matter what, we can endure the persecution. If it's the other way, where it's quite a quote spiritually violent people that have an awakening and go, I need God, and they cling to God and amend their sinful lives to become, you know, more what God wanted. Pray that it may also be so. The Holy Spirit may guide us into repentance and a new life. So we see the interpretation is unclear. But both make the point that, you know, living life as a follower of Jesus Christ isn't just, well, click it off my mind, I'm set, see you next week. It's a very serious thing. People who are persecuted know they're being persecuted. And no, being made fun of right now in North America is not the same as being persecuted. You want to see persecution, go to North Korea, go to Pakistan, go to China. That's persecution. And yet the church keeps up. How? By the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit. It's not easy, but the Holy Spirit's the X factor. God allows them to stay true to the faith. And it's the other interpretation. Again, no one of their own reason or strength can repent and come to God and change their life. It comes with the help of God, with the Holy Spirit. So however you interpret this verse, the common denominator is the same. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray for guidance. For a comfortable middle-class life, going, well, I'm covered spiritually, that ain't going to cut it. And the, the troubles we find ourselves in right now, I blame myself and the church as much as anyone else. For so often, we in the church were just more concerned about maintaining our own comfortable middle-class, you know, salaried lifestyle, and just speaking for, you know, 15, 20 minutes on a Sunday and going home. We didn't stand for Christ when we should have, and things have snowballed. But it's not over yet. Jesus Christ is still here. We pray, the Holy Spirit is still living and active, and so we pray, whatever happens, God, shake us up out of our complacency. Bring back your desire to do what you want. So for, again, get back to the text. Either interpretation of this text requires praying for the Holy Spirit's guidance to not make us fat and lazy, but to make us true followers of our Lord. So whatever's going on in your life right now, and it's been a hard year, pray for the Holy Spirit. 
And however the verse gets interpreted, pray the Holy Spirit's guidance, and he will guide you. He'll guide you past this year, through the years of your life, onto the life that which is eternal. Amen. Let us pray. God, I pray you that you send your Holy Spirit. He shake us with ever complacency and remind us that following you is a living, beating life. So, Lord, guide us in the life, in your life, in Jesus Christ always. Amen.